stand here in freedom today, let me address my comments to all of those who are truly the brave. If you have worn the uniform of this country in either wartime or in peacetime, would, re would you raise your hand, please? Do you see this? And let me say to all of you, to all of you veterans, we welcome you as fellow Americans, and we never try to brand you as extremists. Some fine folks behind me here had a sign that I wanted to show you. Save jobs, and they have some pink slip ideas here. Maybe you can read. Although my good friend Trent Franks wanted to make sure that, you just forget about that S, that's supposed to be Frank for somebody else, a guy from Massachusetts or something. Let me get that back to my friends. I'll sign it in a second. Thank you, thank you very much. Well, here's... Here's what we need to do. You know, it was a great honor to serve alongside Trent Franks and serve alongside John Shattig and so many others in the Congress of the United States. But I can say this, in the fullness of time, as great an honor as that may have been, it is far greater a distinction to stand here with you and alongside you as a fellow citizen. Tom Judy is right, and as I was preceded by my friend Ernie Hancock on the libertarian side of things, and as we take a look at people who come here, not as Republicans or Democrats, or even as independents, libertarians, or vegetarians, but as Americans, as we gather here today, we should understand this basic lesson of history. It's not the unique province of either major political party. But take a look at recent history. When have we reinvigorated our economy nationally? In the early 1960s, Jack Kennedy said we needed to lower taxes across the board. We did so, and that led to economic expansion. In the 1980s, Ronald Reagan said the same thing. We did so. And that invigorated the economy. And then, as honored as I was to serve on the Ways and Means Committee for a decade, the committee charged with dealing with taxation, I was pleased to work with the 43rd president to lower taxes. Initially, he was a bit reticent, but in the wake of 9-11, he came around to our way of thinking with substantial tax cuts, and even at that trying time, what did that do? It invigorated the engines of economic expansion. It has worked before, it can work again. And whether it is Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C., or here at this remarkable Arizona State Capitol, the same lesson can work for us. Milton Friedman, Milton Friedman said something that makes so much sense. If you want less of something, tax it. This is something that our very good friends here should keep in mind, especially those in the executive tower beyond the copper dome. If you want less opportunity, raise taxes. If you want fewer jobs, raise taxes. If you want the wrong prescription to our ills in our state, raise taxes. But as for us, we stand here clearly stating no new no taxes. You are remarkable people, and America is a remarkable nation. 
as the sun sets, as thousands have gathered here, we understand that no longer will April 15th be viewed as tax day. No, for us, it is a celebration of our citizenship. Some speak of revolution. I speak instead of restoration. A restoration of freedom and family and prosperity. God bless you and God bless America. I'm about to bring a couple ladies up here onto the stage. The first one is Senator Sylvia Allen, who represents and wants to give a big shout out to the eastern counties of Arizona, Apache, Navajo, Gila, Greenlee, and Graham counties. Good evening. Yes, I represent five district counties called rural Arizona and it's the rural heart of Arizona. Thank you for coming today. I want to tell you how much this is mean to us. We have a huge job down here to try to correct our three billion dollar deficit. There's many of us that are working so hard to do it without any new tax increase. It's so important. It is so important that we feel your support because every day I receive hundreds of emails from people who are really beating us up because of us cutting programs that they have a vested interest in. Ladies and gentlemen, we have got to fix this problem, not just for us, and it's the hard thing to do, but we've got to do it for our children. Yeah. I want you to know that John Adams said, one of our founding fathers, that the real American Revolution didn't happen in 1776. It happened long before that, when there was a change in the hearts and the minds of the people, when they determined that there was time to be free. So it's time now for us to turn back to the founding principles that this nation was founded on, or, and if we don't, we'll continue down the long, dark road of socialism. It has never worked. It never will work. So thank you again for coming. It's just what we all needed down here. Thank you. And our next speaker is Representative Debbie Lesko. And let me tell you something about Debbie. Debbie's from Glendale, Peoria. And Sun City. And Debbie used to be on our local board of the Arizona chapter of Americans for Prosperity. She is a taxpayer activist turned legislator. Thank you. I ran for office because I was worried about the future of our nation. And I tell you what, since Obama has become president, I am scared to death. You need to keep fighting. We need to keep fighting for the values of our nation that made it great. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is also from the world of KFYI. This gal was on the radio for almost five years ago now, when a bunch of you and I were fighting the light rail. <laughs> How many of you are big fans of light rail? <laughs> you mean you think the trolley is a waste of your money? Yeah! It, it is! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Terry Gilbert. Thank you, Tom. Nice to be here. It's great to address you all. 